having to turn up and be accountable, having these conversations that re-inspire me and re-energize me and just make me, they, they don't make me feel old, which is what I sometimes feel like I'm about to turn 47 and I think, oh my gosh, maybe half of my life is gone. Am I going to have enough years to do all the things that I want to do? And when I'm around great people, having great conversation, doing great things, it makes me feel so alive. Hey there, and welcome to the Bringing Business to Retail podcast. If you're looking to get more sales, more customers, master your marketing, and ultimately take control of your retail or e-commerce business, then you're in the right place. I'm Selena Knight, a retail growth strategist and multi-award winning store owner whose superpower is uncovering exactly what your business requires to move to the next level. I'll provide you with the strategies, the tools, and the insight you need to scale your store. All you need to do is take action. Ready to get started? Hey there, and welcome to the Bringing Business to Retail podcast. Wow, what a weekend that I have had. It is the end of November, and this past weekend, I hosted two Japanese students into our home and just for a few days. My daughter loves the whole Japanese culture. She studies Japanese at school. She's obsessed with everything Japanese. So I thought this would be a really good opportunity for her to be able to converse in the Japanese language and also, of course, for them to learn some English. And, you know, that happened, but oh my gosh, it was very, very exhausting. And not because they were hard work in any way, shape, or form, but when there is that language barrier, you're constantly looking for ways to fill the gap, I guess, is is probably a really good way of saying it, is you don't want that awkwardness. You don't want that, you know, that empty space where you're not sure if the other person doesn't feel comfortable or if they're just happy sitting in silence. Whereas when when you're friends with people, you know sometimes you're happy to just sit next to each other and read a book. And I think our pretty much our saving grace was the simple fact that my daughter and her best friend, the two Japanese students that they hosted, were actually best, best friends as well. So we ended up with four girls who knew each other, who got along well together, and we pretty much did everything as this giant happy family, the two families together joined in and we took them shopping in the city. We took them, um, I took my two for a beautiful nature walk because one of the things she wanted to see was a brilliant cityscape. So I took her to one of my favorite places in Sydney where she had a view right across the harbor to the Harbour Bridge, the Opera House, all the way through Barangaroo, all the way up the harbor. She got to see everything she wanted to see. And then we took them to the beach. And of course, the beach is not the beach in Australia on a beautiful summer day, sunny, day, sunny, sunny summer day, unless you have ice cream. And there are a few things afterwards that I reflected on, which is one, I am sure that they think that we are ridiculously obese because we do nothing but eat. It was an interesting conversation to have with them about how they just have their set three meals a day. And there's no morning tea, there's no afternoon tea, there's no desserts. In fact, one of the questions they asked me uh, through Google Translate was, mind you, let me just say, we had our Friday night burger night and then we also had some ice cream and fruit afterwards. And they sent me a message through Google Translate that said, do you always have dinners as luxurious as this? which of course, you know, I had to laugh at because it's burgers, chips and ice cream and fruit. Like really, (laughs) it is nothing very exciting. But it's interesting, isn't it? That what we take as thinking is our everyday, basic, boring, mundane life that through somebody else's lens can be ridiculously luxurious. And I also have to think about the fact that these weren't poor students. They go to one of the most elite schools in Japan for girls. So 
then, you know, they're not coming from a lower, you know, I say in air quotes, a, a lower socioeconomic background than what we are. I suspect it's it's extremely similar, which is why they they picked the host families that they did. But that concept that what we consider to be basic, boring every day to somebody else is very, very different and sometimes very, very grand. And so it's, it kind of got me thinking about life, about how we take for granted some of the things that we do and how we look at what somebody else does and can often measure ourselves against what we see as the highlights. And I had to take great pains to get into Google Translate and tell our young visitors that this was a special occasion. We generally only have dessert on a Sunday and and tell them that no, you know, I wasn't going to go as far as saying, no, we have burgers every Friday night. But I, I basically came back and said, no, but you are our special visitors. So we are making a, a very big effort, you know, to treat you very well, to which, of course, they were extremely thankful. But yeah, it got me thinking about the fact that what we take for granted in our own lives can sometimes be somebody else's normal. And maybe sometimes we should just sit back and reflect on how great our lives actually are. And so that is a perfect segue into the conversation I want to have with you today, which is the conversations I've had throughout 2022 that have changed my life and my business forever. Now, that was not one of the ones I was going to pop in there, but hey, let's throw it in anyway, because it just happened 24 hours ago. And it is important that sometimes we get so stuck in the mundane, everydayness of our lives that we don't stop to think that other people would really see what we're doing, especially as business owners. The fact that I could you know, duck out to drop them back off this morning or the fact that I can stop work for a lunch break or I can finish early or, you know, you have this flexibility. Hopefully you have some flexibility in your business that that is what some people would love to have in their lives. Instead, they get up every single day and they trudge off to a job that they hate working for someone that they really dislike. And if they see our lives, maybe they might resent what we have because to them it's what they've always dreamed of, but they don't have that. So that, as I said, was not one of my conversations, but it was the it was a very pertinent segue to the conversations I did want to have with you today. And that was the fact that George on our team, who does a lot of our strategy calls, has actually been off sick for the last week or so. And so in the attempt to not have to rebook people where possible, I decided to jump in and do some of his strategy calls. Now, I do do this anyway every now and then because I like to connect one-on-one. So every now and then I'll just say, you know what, I'll do that call just, just randomly because it's these conversations with you guys that keep me grounded. They keep me in the thick of things, because I, I'm obviously not at the same point that you guys are at in your business. And so I need to be able to see the obstacles that you're hitting, like what's going through your head? What does your day look like? And having these conversations, which realistically, I would charge $2,000 to be one on one of these calls. It's amazing to see how some people are so thankful for the opportunity to speak with me directly, but other people are almost confronted by the fact that I'm on the call. And like I've literally had people who spend 45 minutes arguing with me about everything and other people who are so grateful for the fact that I've given up my time to help them grow their business. Anyway, the conversations that I've been having have ranged from people deciding whether they want a hobby business, because in some cases they're they're just starting out, or maybe they've been doing it for a while, but they're not making a lot of money, through to the people, which is the, you know, the general bulk of the people I speak to have built themselves a job. And it's a job they're not really very happy with. It's a job where they get up, they go to work, the business isn't working for them. 
It's the whole reason I created the Retail Academy and this business is to get people from that job into the CEO of a business that works for them. So we have, you know, at one end, the people who've got the hobby business, the bulk of the people I've spoken to have a job in air quotes and, you know, a pretty crappy job at that because it's not giving them sick leave or holiday leave. And it requires 150% of their energy to be put in just to make the business turn over right through to people who are doing, you know, they're okay or they're doing pretty well, but they've hit a plateau. And so it was just, it's just been interesting to have these conversations with you guys. And it's gotten me thinking about how, you know, as we often do at this time of year, we reflect on the things that have happened in our lives and in our businesses and how they've, they've changed us. So if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you'll know that earlier on this year, I joined what I have called CEO Club. And so it is a, it's the club of United Business Owners and it's it's not BNI, if you know what that is. It's actually the complete opposite of BNI. It is just a group of people who are business owners or are at very high, you know, maybe they're partners in a business and they just want to build connections with people with with kind of no strings attached. Whereas with something like BNI, there are a lot of like it's puppeteering. There are a lot of strings attached. And so it kind of felt like my place. And I'll be honest, it was it well, it has been ridiculously life-changing joining the the club. Because when I joined, and you have to go through an interview to join the club. And when I joined, they asked me why I wanted to join. And I remember saying, and, and they still laugh about it now. I remember saying, I want to have a conversation with people who can rub two brain cells together. <laughs> and what I meant by that was I want to have those next level conversations. I want to have conversations with people who are way further along than me and who can give me advice or, you know, the offhanded comments that they're going to give me that actually shape my future. Because going into this, I was stuck. I've been doing the strategy and the consulting for, what is it, eight years now. And consulting is hard. It's hard because you are, when you go into someone's business at that high level, at that six-figure level where people hire me to come into their business, it's essentially as, as like a board member, if you can think of that. It is a strategic consultant who is entrenched in the business. And that for me is very emotionally draining because it's as if it is my business and I put everything into it. And I'm constantly on the lookout for partnerships or for apps or for anything that can help grow the business, which is why I only take a select number of people at that higher level. But I also found that I didn't have anyone to turn to, to ask really hard questions, like the really hard questions, not just like, you know, hey, should I send a newsletter out? I'm talking, you know, hey, should I invest $50,000 into this thing that I think will grow my business, but I'm not sure. Those growth questions, I, you know, as much as I love my husband, and if you've listened to the podcast before, I've told you this, he is an amazing cheerleader but he doesn't feel that it's his place to give me this kind of advice. So I had no one there to make me, to push me to think bigger, not to make me, to really push me to think bigger. And as a result, I was stuck. I was kind of trying things and we would put the effort in and my team are amazing, but it just felt like I needed something else. And I've spent a lot of the last couple of years really trying things out, really trying to get my groove and moving forward and focusing. But I feel like now looking back, because you know that's the whole point of this conver- of this conversation, this podcast is the reflection is, yes, I was focusing, but I wasn't truly focusing, not like I have been for about the last six months. And going into that club was a 
big chunk of cash and it was on your credit card, all to be paid up front. You had no payment plans, nothing. And so that was probably my first big decision I made this year that, you know, I put my money where my mouth is kind of thing. I I stepped ridiculously out of my comfort zone and I joined the club. But as a result, I've built these connections and these connections that I've built have caused, or not caused, but have been the catalyst for huge wins in my business. And you might remember if you listen to the podcast that, I don't know, maybe about three or four months ago, maybe even longer, I did a Facebook Live. I I I remember I was sitting in the car at the doctor's surgery because I was getting this, what I thought was a skin cancer or something looked at. It ended up being you know, totally fine, but I was getting it looked at and getting the the referral to have the specialist look at it. And I was talking about how the night before I'd been sat at CEO club and I just happened to sit next to this guy and he was talking to me and he, you know, the conversation was essentially, he asked me what my number was. And I was like, I, I don't really understand the question. He's like, well, what's the number that if I was to give you the cash today, you would sell your business at? And I said to him, it's, it's, you know, at least eight figures, if not nine. Just to be clear, eight figures, 10 million, you know, 10 to 99 million dollars, nine figures over a hundred million dollars. And I, actually I think I said nine figures because I had already worked this out in my head. I had already looked at different verticals that I could grow my business into and how I could do collaborations with things like pharmacies to bring a version of scale your store into what is essentially a service provider niche to help them to help their customers to sell more. And so I've kind of had it mapped out in the back of my head. I just didn't know how to get there. I didn't have the resources to get there. But that throwaway conversation, just that throwaway, it was just a a harmless conversation, sat on an ottoman by a window with a glass of my wine, of wine in each of our hands that was the catalyst for change in my business because that was the part where i knew that i was in the company of great people and as a result this year i have invested heavily into things that are guaranteed to move the needle forward in my business and so, I mean, that was the first conversation. So the the title of this podcast is Conversations of 2022 That Changed My Life and My Business. That was the first one, was that simple conversation of at what point are you ready to sell? At what point is, you know, where do you see your business going? I mean, he didn't say any of those questions, but asking yourself that, what is your number? If someone came up to you today and gave you a million dollars, two million dollars, Would you tap out and say, sure thing, I'll take the money and I'm going to go on a really great holiday? It's okay if that's okay. It's okay if that's you. But for me, that number has to be like $100 million because I know that that is the kind of level of income and revenue and the lives that my business can change if I have the right people around me, if I have the right connections, if I have the right resources. And maybe it is pipe dreams, but I actually feel right within my core that I am at this point now in my life where I have got the right, I'm going to say resources, but I've got the right foundation that can only get me higher and higher and higher. Like I've I've built the foundations and we are ready to build the stairs to go up and up and up. So that was number one conversation. The next conversation I had, well, I I don't know if these are in chronological order. They're in chronological order in my head, but maybe they weren't actually in chronological order. But the next conversation that comes to mind was the one that I had about bringing a new agency in to do our ads. So if you've been around for a while, you know that we used to have a marketing agency. I used to have a marketing agency. I sold that off last year because I realized I hated every moment of running an agency. That is not what I do as a strategist. And there are people who are much better at doing it than I am. And 
when it came to running my ads, clearly I had a lot of experience and I still do have a lot of experience. And finding someone who had more experience than me was really difficult. And it was quite confronting for other agencies to come in and go, whoa, like if we work with this person, they're actually going to know if we're, you know, we're talking a whole bunch of bullshit or not. And so I've really struggled to find a good agency. And so I tried one, they were pretty okay, but then they actually closed their agency down too, sold their agency to somebody else. The second agency I chose couldn't get me the, as good of results as I could get. And, and you know, in all fairness, they were the ones who put their hand up and said, look, we don't think we're right for you because you can get better results than us. It doesn't happen very often, but, you know, the simple fact is we can't ethically continue to take your money if we're not getting you the results. So roll on me having to take over all of our ads, the majority of our marketing, right when a whole bunch of other stuff was was happening. And so that was a really stressful time for me in the business because I could see all these avenues for growth, but I literally had no bandwidth to take it on. And so I, I, one of the things I really made it my, you know, made a point of having the conversations around was whenever I was in the company of good people is I would talk about how I needed a new agency to take us to the next level. And I think it took about four months. And that was four months of growth that didn't happen as fast as it should because it all rested on me. And I was, you know, let's be honest, I was kind of doing it in my spare time because I had clients I had to work with. I had content I had to produce. I had a new course that we were putting together. And so purely, you know, one of the, again, one of those serendipitous moments where somebody mentioned to me about a, a company that is a virtual CMO or chief marketing officer. Now, I knew that they existed because I actually recommend a virtual CFO, chief financial officer, to a lot of my clients. And, you know, the great thing is if you're in our Scale Your Store program, this Friday we have her, Michelle from Lantern Partners coming in, talking all about forecasting inventory. And I highly recommend working with someone like a V VCFO, so virtual CFO, to help you grow your business. And I, I, I'd heard about VCMOs, or sometimes they're called fractional marketing teams or a fractional CMO team. I'd heard of them, but I'd never really investigated more. But when someone came back to me in conversation and said, no, we've been working with this VCMO team, like you should really give them a, a, a call because they take everything off your plate. Like, ding, 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 ding. I am all for that kind of situation, delegating responsibility and or delegating implementation, not responsibility, and being able to free up time in my business. And if you're watching the video of this and you're like, what is Sal doing? She is currently just moving the curtain across <laughs> because the light is streaming right in my eyeballs. So. I got on a call with them. Like, that's the whole point, right? You get on a call. And I have to say, I was really impressed with the questions that they asked me, but also the fact that they take over what I call full funnel management. So that means from your ads through to your landing pages, through to email sequences, the all the numbers and the stats, they take over it all. And for me, that was worth the money because it means that my team can now work on all these things that we've had sitting in the background, but we've never quite had time to get around to. And I had never even considered that option until I had a conversation. So we now have literally hours, I would say days of our time are freed up. And I am not having to focus on multiple things going on at the same time, but I also have a sounding board. So, you know, in previous times, I've had all these great ideas and I've tried to jam them in one after the other, but they sit back and they go, well, 
actually, no, if we're going to do this right, we need to take two weeks to do it, or we need to take four weeks to do it, or, you know, based on the, you know, what, what's tracking in your, like, based on the emails that are opened or based on what the comments that you, what the comments, that's terrible English, based on the comments that are coming through in our social media, we think this would be a better offer. And that has been life-changing for me because not only do they guarantee to make me 10 times more than what I pay them, but they're a voice of reason. They're that reality check. They're the accountability, but then they're the implementation as well. Remember, I can't delegate responsibility and I have had to go in numerous times and, and so of my team and say, there are little things in our in our CRM, like they accidentally sent out an email that had one of our team members' names on it rather than your name on it. And, you know, we've all done it. But there are little things like that where I can't abdicate my responsibility, but I can delegate the implementation. So so that is really important for you to understand as you grow your business. And now just recently, just literally today, I have laid out another ridiculously huge investment to take my business to the next level and to free up our resources and to bring on specialists. And I think I feel like that's another podcast in the making. But let me move on to the next conversation that I had. So, so far we had the conversation about what's my number and then the conversation about hiring an ads manager that ended up being a fractional CMO company or VCMO company. You're probably going to laugh. <laughs> And this next conversation, because it's a conversation I had with myself in my head for many days. And to be fair, it was probably less of a conversation and more of an argument with Alex Hormozy, which if you don't know him, he owns a company called acquisition.com and they they take a portion, like equity part of your business to help you scale. Dude is really, really smart. He's built loads of, he, you know, he takes home like a million dollars a month. So he knows what he's doing. And anyway, I remember I was sitting at the gym and when I go to the gym these days, I have to do this lower back training protocol before I can go on to any heavy lifting or chin ups or anything like that. And it's about a 20 minute protocol of exercises that I have to go through to make sure that my back is all warmed up and I don't go into spasm and bloody, bloody, blah. So I'm laying on the mat. I'm going through my protocol and I'm having arguments pretty much every day for, I reckon, 10 days with Alex Hormozy, who clearly has no idea how I'm having this argument with him because it's all in my head and he wasn't there. But I'd listened to this podcast where he was saying that if you aren't prepared to guarantee your products or your services, then you shouldn't be in business. And I argued with him a lot on that because immediately my mind raced to the hundreds, if not thousands of people who, in fact, it would be thousands of people who have bought my trainings or downloaded my programs or even worked with me one-on-one, but they didn't do the work. And so they didn't get the results. So I'll be honest, (laughs) this conversation slash argument went on for, I reckon, probably seven to 10 days. Every time it was like a like a Pavlovian response. Every time I laid down on that mat, and I you know, generally go to the gym six times a week, every time I laid down on that mat to go through that pre-routine po- protocol, I would come back to this argument because that's where I'd originally had the convers- heard the conversation over and over again. It played. If you can't deliver more value than a customer has paid you, then you have to be giving better. You have to be better. You have to create better. That was what he said in the podcast. Hmm. And clearly it got me thinking. It got me thinking actually for days on end. Why didn't these people take action? How could I help them get results? How could myself and my team deliver 
way more value than you guys have paid to buy one of my programs or to come and work with me. Truthfully, it took me about two and a half months to work out the answer. Eventually, I did it. I did what Alex Homozi said, and I guaranteed every product that I sell from $27,000 right up to $100,000. If you can't make back at least what you paid, then I will give you your money back. I put in the systems and I put the people in place to more than over deliver. And I know that there are not a lot of people who are willing to put that kind of money on the line. But I am because I believe in what I've built and I believe the results that you can get if you do the work because I've seen it firsthand. Now, of course, you can't just buy the thing and, you know, there's no magic bullet. You've got to do the work. But in some cases, I triple guarantee. I guarantee that you will make triple what you paid on my programs because that conversation with (laughs) <laughs> that pretend conversation with Alex Homozi in my head over and over and over again was if you can't deliver to your customers to a point where you can guarantee that they're happy, then you're not doing your job. Hmm, that's food for thought, right? So like I said, it took, took me a couple of months, but eventually I came around and realized that if we put some systems and processes and people in place, I can guarantee that. I can guarantee that if you give me $100,000, I will make you more than $100,000 back if you do the work. So throughout all of this, I think one of the key things that I have discovered is that whilst strategies in and of themselves are important, and and they're really important at certain stages of your business, there is a point in business where it's those one-on-one conversations and it's the hive mind and it's the connections that you actually need. It is these almost intangible circumstances that you need to put yourself into a position so that they happen around you. Because if you are sitting in your back office, if you are sitting in your spare bedroom running an e-commerce business, if you are sitting in the storeroom and you are hoping to have these conversations, it's not going to happen. You're not crowdsourcing these conversations on Facebook. You have to put yourself out there. Now, I know that I wouldn't have the business that I have if I hadn't have been part of masterminds in the past. And even though CEO Club isn't technically a mastermind. It kind of runs on the same premise. And free can be good. But when there is no skin in the game, when there's no selection criteria, then free can also be bloody difficult and time consuming. And and honestly, can actually be detrimental to your business. You're going to get to a point in your business, if you're not already there, where you already know what needs to be done but you're probably not doing it. You're keeping yourself stuck in busy work. And honestly, just like these big decisions that I have made in this past year, it has to hurt a little bit. Sometimes it has to hurt a lot. You literally have to be in that position where you've got you know, the shaky hand hovering over the confirm button as you're transferring money or you're putting your credit card in. Because That is what makes you put the effort in. That is the skin in the game. That is the the everything where when you put it all on the line or if you put a lot of money on the line, you are determined to make sure that you get a return on that investment. And I know that that's what it's been like for me every time. And even today, it was just one of those days where I was transferring the money to somebody else tens of thousands of dollars. And I was looking at the bank account over and over again, like, is the number right? I can't afford for this to be wrong. And yep, yep. Copy, paste. Yep, yep. All good. Yep, yep. Okay. Am I really going to do this? Yes, I'm going to do this. Okay. All right. Yep. Okay. (laughs) And press the button. But I, I kind of want to give you some tips about 
the community that I'm in, not just in CEO Club, but the community that I have put myself in and surrounded myself with this year so that you can take some of this away and surround yourself with similar people. So here are some of the things that I love about the community I have right now, which is first and foremost, I think really importantly has been hand-picked connections. And these have been game changers because in CEO Club, you get put into a group of people every quarter that have been handpicked to be with you. And when I am personally introduced that people I can learn from, but also to help grow, that has made a huge difference to my own confidence. And you probably think that I am an extremely confident person. Trust me, going into a a club where the guy next to you made, you know, half a billion dollars last year and is asking you for advice, oh, that's when your confidence just disappears out the window. But you know what? I had advice and it was really good advice. It has changed my outlook on my life and my business. And here's the funny thing. I I I said to you earlier, and if you've listened for a long time, you'll know that my husband is an amazing cheerleader. And he is always the kind of person who goes, you can do it. You know, you always make it work. You know, you always end up on the right side, all those kinds of things. But for the first time, I was really struggling with a decision, this last decision to, to turn over tens of, to, to hand over, turn over, hand over tens of thousands of dollars to somebody who can take my business to the next level. And he said to me, I think you should do it. Now in 18 years of marriage and I think what, 15 years of business, very rarely does he ever say something as definitive as, I think you should do it, especially when we're talking a lot of thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars. But he did. And I almost feel like the confidence that this has brought up in me has allowed him not just to stand behind me, but to feel like if he gives me some advice, it's meaningful. And I don't think I can stress how important that comment from him has been, maybe that's conversation number four, five, whatever number we're up to, is just walking around the dog park, which is where we have most of our discussions, and and me being really stressed about whether this is a good decision or a bad decision and asking him his advice and him just saying, yeah, I think think this is one of those ones you should do. And so that, that has just given me, I'm sitting here talking to you about it, right? That has given me this strength within myself to feel like I'm doing the right thing. Now, just as a total aside, the conversations I have had at CEO Club have been so different and profound to what I would normally have. I have this, I've had this advice, I've had this idea since January when I went over to Canada for a literally life-changing use for existing technology. Everything already exists, but nobody has put all the parts together. And if they do, it could change people's lives. And I've thought of it. I can't talk to you about it because if I talk to you about it, then it, you can no longer you know, do anything with your patent or copyright and all that kind of, not copyright, but patent and, and trademark and all those sorts of things. And I met with somebody inside of CEO Club and I made the decision to tell him about it. And it's been, it's just been phenomenal because he's come back and he has found all the places, things I would never have dreamed of where the idea could become unstuck or not viable. And then he's gone on to say, but he is who we need to make this happen. Let's just go and find some people in the club who know the people who can make this happen. Now, I don't know where this will end up. Maybe nowhere. Maybe it will just be another one of my great ideas. But I have had so many ideas and opportunities along the way in business that I never took advantage of because I was too scared or I didn't have the money or I lacked the knowledge or I lacked the people. 
And being part of this club has made all of that disappear because likewise, I was at a dinner not long ago when I had another great idea and a guy, the guy across from me said, you secure the site and I'll give you the money. Like, we're talking $100 million here. And I, I remember just like, I'm like, I'm sorry. He's like, I think it's a great idea. I live locally. It'll work. If you can get the site, I'll get you the cash. I'll, I'll find the venture capital. I'm like, I, I kind of have a lot of stuff on at the moment, but it is fantastic to know that. And can we revisit in 2023? So there are opportunities that have opened up to me because I have put myself out there and I have paid money to be in a group of people who are in vastly different arenas to what I'm at, who have different connections to what I have. And let's be honest, I'm probably way smarter than I am. And I have to laugh because as I'm recording this podcast, my email has just popped up and it says, hi, family. I just want to let you know that the club now has a country house. <laughs> like, how did I become so fancy? <laughs> okay, so I was telling you about what I love about the community of people I've surrounded myself in. So the handpicked connections is number one. The second one would be this personal guidance, like being able to sit down with people who I would never be able to get in a room with in any other place and get one-on-one -on -one help quite often for no money at all on things that previously would have helped help you know held me back or kept me stuck or you know maybe sometimes for months but also sometimes for years or forever like this concept of the thing i was telling you about like it's been a thing in my head and now it could potentially be a reality like i get to yeah, i could potentially change millions of people's of lives just by putting these two pieces of technology together that nobody else has thought of. So it's given me the connections. It's given me the access to guidance, one-on-one -on -one guidance. It has fast-tracked so many things, mostly access to people, but also access to resources. <laughs> like the country house. No, no, I'm joking. But it's given me access to resources that I would never have thought I would have the ability to, to be in the presence of. But also even things like government funding or venture capital, like stuff that I didn't even know how to get access to or didn't even know that it existed in some cases in terms of government funding. And I am all for spending someone else's money to grow my business. But mostly what it has given me is the momentum, having to turn up and be accountable, having these conversations that re-inspire me and re-energize me and just make me, they, they don't make me feel old, which is what I sometimes feel like I'm about to turn 47 and I think, oh my gosh, maybe half of my life is gone. Am I going to have enough years to do all the things that I want to do? And when I'm around great people, having great conversation, doing great things, it makes me feel so alive. So the summary of all of this has been that 2022 has been a very expensive year for me, but the result is my business has moved up exponentially, like multiple levels in just a handful of months because I've been able to get this really unbiased view of things that needed to be done and resources that I've been able to access. And as a result, our sales have skyrocketed. Like I just fun fact. And I tell people, if you've been on one of my calls, I've probably told you this where I've jumped in. Every time I get a Stripe notification, of a sale, I don't care if it's for $10 or $10,000, I actually do a little happy dance. Like if you're watching the video, I, you, you see me. I was, if you're at my local dog park and you see me go like this, it's because I've had a sale and my husband think it's, it thinks it's hilarious. Like we'll be walking through the dog park. I'll see the notification. I'll be like, oh. it's like, did you just get another sale? Yeah, I just got another sale. 
If you can't see the video, just imagine me doing a little bit of a chair dance. I'm kind of uh, bopping my shoulders up and down and waving my head and smiling a lot because every time a sale comes through, yes, there's money coming into the account. But more importantly for me, I sit there and think, yes, like this is one more independent retailer who is one step closer to staying in business and thriving and giving me a great shopping experience because, you know, I, I can be selfish sometimes. I like to spend money and, and, and you know, have great experiences. But that keeps everything going. And the next thing is I work less. Hmm. That has been a particularly difficult thing to deal with over this year where I have had free time. And free time and I don't always get along well. And so I end up doing things like volunteer work. But I will say, I'll be completely transparent and say that there have been teething pains along the way. Like I said, for example, in our latest marketing campaign, our fractional CMO team accidentally put one of my team's names rather than your name in the email. It happens. Did the world end? No. Did it give us an excuse to send another email out? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> but you have to be okay with dealing with those teething pains because when you're excited about it, the light at the end of the very short tunnel is so bright that it just keeps moving you on because you want to get to the other side. And I have had many moments this year transferring tens of thousands of dollars. I still kind of get little heart palpitations. My hand shaking on that confirm button or submit or pay button and alternating back or forth whether it was a good idea. But the ones that I've gone ahead with, the actually the ones that have cost me the most amount of money have all been momentous. The ones that I've kind of scrimped on, yeah, Yeah, if I had my time back, I probably wouldn't have, you know, spent the money on them. But the big ones, the big ones have been life and business changing. But I've also been pushed to look inwards more. And I have had to confront a lot of my internal negativity that I've been holding, mostly against myself, and really looking at how attached my self-worth is to my business and detaching that, uh, which has been difficult. But now that I'm finding other outlets for my creativity and for my my knowledge and for the ability to change lives, it's less of an issue. And it's taken me a lot of time to get to that point. I've also spent a lot of money on my health this year from a personal trainer I see a kinesiologist a couple of times a month. I go to the physio a couple of times a month. I have a myofascial massage guy, Tucker. He's amazing. I've got a naturopath. I'm sure there are other people that I have not thought about off the top of my head because I have realized that I want to live a really long life and I don't want to be in pain and I don't want to be struggling and tired and feeling overworked. I want to feel energized and excited and I want to live another 50 years so I can change the world in as many ways as I as I can. And I've had more time freed up. My business is making more money, which most people think you have to work more to make more money. Fun fact, sometimes when you step back, your business makes more money without you there. And I'm passionate about what the future holds. So these conversations I've surrounded myself with this year have changed my life. They've changed my business. I feel like they've kind of changed my marriage as well. We didn't even go into the friendship sides of things, but it's definitely changed some of my friendships because I've made new friends. And to be fair, I've lost some friends because as you grow as a person, sometimes you have to leave other people behind. Before I forget, I have to say, The result of this has been that one of the things I have realized this year is that I don't really want to do an awful lot of consulting anymore. Going into someone's business on that level where 
you are personally responsible for their growth and being so entrenched at that level is quite draining. And to be fair, I actually think it is worth more than what I charge. And so I've had to sit down and think about what do I want from my business? And what I want is to change people's lives. What I want is the ability to shop at more independent retailers. What I want is more people making money from their businesses so they can serve more customers, but not being the engine that drives it so that if you put, you know, if you stop, if you break down, everything breaks down. I want businesses that thrive and encourage their team members to be better and do better. And I think I can do that. I think I can do that at a level that doesn't drain me and gives you guys the access to me that you want, but also at a price point that is a stretch probably for most of you. It will hurt a little bit, but it's still achievable. And most importantly, it comes with a money back guarantee because that's my new thing, right? If, if I can't make you back the money, I'll give you your money back. And so I have decided to like drum roll, please. We got here in the end. I have decided to reopen my supercharged mastermind. It's been a few years, but I think this is it. I think this is the way that I get to change your life and and I get to have those conversations that excite me again. I love getting on calls with you guys, but not having to be so entrenched in a business that I'm thinking about it for all hours of the day, but still being there, still being in there every single week, having conversations, growing businesses, seeing the results because your results are what keep me going. Giving you access to my team who are amazing at what they do. Giving you access to my community like CEO Club to give you the knowledge and the resources and the connections and the conversations that you need to take your business to the next level. So uh, with all of that, I, as I said, I've decided to reopen my Supercharged Mastermind and we're currently taking applications. I'm going to be a bit of a stickler because I only want great people in there, but I also want people at a certain level in business because you don't want to be having conversations with someone who's a startup. If you're doing $750,000 or a million dollars, like you want to be able to have conversations with people who are at a level in their business, either at or above you, because they're the people who are going to push you just like the experiences that I've had. And so I'm excited. I am really excited to be able to change out my business model a little bit and to get kind of back in the trenches and have that connection to help grow businesses because it feels like it's been a long time since I've been there and not working in these little, not little, in these particular niches or in particular you know, one particular problem for one particular company for a big amount of time. And so if you want to work with me and my team, if you want that access, if you want that, the conversations, if you want the strategies, if you want all the things that come with hanging out with amazing people doing amazing things, I want you to head over to selinanight.com forward slash supercharge make sure you watch the video on the page because in there I will tell you about commitments. I will tell you about the prerequisites. I will tell you about the criteria that you have to meet in order to even have a meeting with me about the program because I'm a a bit of a stickler on this one. If I'm going to do it, it's got to be fair for everyone. And that is not to say that if you're at a different level in business, you're not good enough. It's just more about those conversations. And maybe in the future, I will look at opening a program to people who are are at a different level in business. But right now, I feel like this is where I need to be. I feel like this is 2023, just ready to go off. And I am super, super excited. So if you would like the chance to work with me and my expert team and have these kinds of conversations that change your life and your business and maybe even your marriage, head on over to selinanight.com forward slash supercharge, pop your details in and it will prompt you to book an appointment. That appointment is with me personally 
and we'll have a conversation just like we've had a conversation today and see if it is all a good fit. Alrighty. Uh, with that, I've been talking for a very long time. I have had to put this <laughs> I've had to put this podcast off recording because they have been cutting down a beautiful Angophora a couple of houses down and I've been watching it with great pains because I used to be an arborist wondering how the heck they got permission to remove that tree. But of course, between the chainsaws and the wood chippers, the noise has been ridiculously loud. So I decided to wait until after dinner to record this episode. It's a bit of an off-the-cuff episode. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope I'll be talking to some of you soon after you come and have a chat with me about whether Supercharge is right for you. If you've loved this episode, please make sure to leave a review on your platform of choice so that we can help more retailers to grow because the more independent retailers who are out there, the more customers we can serve. Alrighty, I'll see you next week. Bye. So that's a wrap. I'd love to hear what insight you've gotten from this episode and how you're going to put it into action. If you're a social kind of person, follow me at the Selena Knight and make sure to leave a comment and let me know. And if this episode made you think a little bit differently or gave you some inspiration or perhaps gave you the kick that you needed to take action, then please take a couple of minutes to leave me a review on your platform of choice. Because the more reviews the show gets, the more independent retail and e-commerce stores just like yours that we can help to scale. And when that happens, it's a win for you, a win for your community, and a win for your customers. I'll see you on the next episode.